Joining us now, Dr. Robert Redfield, Director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Dr. Redfield, good morning. It's good to have you here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. We've talked about some of these encouraging signs where you're seeing new cases and hospitalization rates stabilize. Are you ready to say that we are at the peak, at the apex? You know, I think, Savannah, we are nearing the peak right now. I think we'll sometime, hopefully this week, we will be able to say that, you know, you'll know when you're at the peak when the next day is actually less than the day before. But clearly the rate, uh, we are stabilizing across the country right now in terms of the state of this outbreak. Looking at the calendar, as I did this morning, I realized we have another three full work weeks of social distancing. The president has said he's hopeful the country could reopen May 1st. He said it's the hardest decision he's going to have to make. From a public health perspective, your lane, is it doable, conceivable that we could reopen the country on May 1st? You know, I think it's important to look at the country as many different separate situations. This uh, uh, pandemic has affected different parts of the country differently. Um, we're looking at the data very carefully, county by county by county, and we will be assessing that. Clearly, the things that need to happen for the reopening is the what's happening with the numbers of new cases. We've got to substantially augment our public health capacity to do early case identification, isolation, and contact tracing, and obviously make sure we have the uh, a medical and hospital capacity, and, and really start working to rebuild confidence in the community so the community has confidence to reopen. Do you feel we need to do widespread antibody testing? In other words, that blood test that shows if you've ever had COVID-19 or coronavirus, because so many people, and I've seen studies that even say up to 50%, can be spreading the virus and never show any symptoms at all. Yeah, in terms of active infection, there is a limit to the time that one is going to be infectious. Um, in ter and so that's the one test for the virus to see if you're actively infected. And we're going to need to have that aggressively employed as we begin to reopen. Because again, central to the success of that, so we stay open, is to be able to do early case identification, isolation, and contact tracing, and to basically prevent uh, uh, the opportunity for community transmission to come back into the system. Antibody testing is going to give us a good idea from a surveillance point of view of, of how significant the outbreak was. Um, and in certain circumstances, I think it will help bring consumer, consumer confidence in certain uh, uh, workforces, uh, particularly some infrastructure workforces, where individuals will have greater confidence knowing they're already immune, particularly in the healthcare setting, uh, to see which healthcare workers basically have been exposed and now may be able to care for patients uh, uh, um, without a concern of uh, infection. One of the influential modelers, a researcher at University of Washington, talked about the dangers of reopening society prematurely. He said he's concerned about a second wave of infection actually in July or August. What's your take on that? Well, there's no doubt uh, that we have to reopen uh, correctly. It's going to be a step-by-step -step gradual process. It's got to be data-driven. Um, and as I said, I think it would be community by community, county by county. Um, we've, we've all sacrificed a substantial amount, and I do want to thank the American people. As you've seen with the original models we had in terms of the, the potential mortality of this virus on our nation, it could have easily been, you know, 250,000, 500,000, a million. Uh, I think the social distancing that the American people all embraced has really led to the reality that we see the overall mortality, while sadly still too high, was yeah. far less than we anticipated. So this has to be done very carefully. And on that note, and, and look, there's going to be a time to look back once the crisis has passed. But the New York Times is reporting that you and Dr. Fauci were among those recommending mitigation, the social distancing in late February. As we all know, the White House did not issue those guidelines until three weeks later, mid-March. And Dr. Fauci candidly said yesterday, look, we could have saved lives if it had started earlier. Do you agree with that? I think it's important what you said. I think right now our job is to get through this outbreak and, and get our uh, country back to work. I will say that if you look back 
it, in, in January and February, the cases we had in this country were all related to China travel. Actually, uh, it was 14 cases throughout the country. The CDC evaluated over 800 contacts of those individuals and only identified two individuals that had been infected, both spouses. It wasn't until February 28th when we saw our first community transmission where we said, wait a minute, where's this, where's this coming from? And so I think it's important when we, when we get back and we get through this, we can look back at the timeline. Um, but our initial response was containment, and, and as I mentioned, through February 28th, I think we had 14 cases in the country, uh, and that's when we got the first two community cases at the end of the month, um, and, and then began, yeah. to, and, and began to institute broader mitigation. And real quickly, I mean, the cases exploded between February 28th and then mid-March. I guess that yes. just to put a fine point on it, if you can answer yes or no, whether you did recommend that social distancing in late February. We, we had an inner, in, as February 28th, as we got into March, we recognized in different areas that the mitigation was now important. Seattle opened up mitigation. CDC sent uh, recommendations to uh, Washington, to California, to New York, and to Florida, uh, recommending that they expand mitigation in those areas. All right. Thank you, CDC Director Dr. Redfield. We really appreciate your time this morning.